a lot of ways on how to run a water coolant on your turbo but these are some of the few that I know that I can think of my idea you probably can come up with something different something much better than this one hello everyone welcome back to the channel Sagitnet2 today's episode where's the best place or how to install a water coolant on your turbocharger I know there's a, a lot of uh, instructions on how to do this thing. A lot of us are not hooking up a water coolant on our turbochargers. I mean, me myself is guilty of that. I have run three turbochargers that has a provision for the water coolant, but I never used those. Not until I invested on a little bit uh, <laughs> higher, uh, higher, higher cost of a turbocharger that's why I start thinking, man, I want this turbocharger to last more than uh, I wanted to. And since it has a provision for it, I said might as well use it, right? So if you are investing on a, a very expensive turbocharger, a well-known brand, yeah, it's a good idea to at least run it. I know some of you don't really care much, but uh, in my opinion, I think it helps. It helps a lot getting it a little bit cooler especially when you shut it down or something let me just show you how i run my uh, water coolant in the past this is how i thought i wanted the uh, coolant uh, connected i did some of my research at that time and i figured out that when the engine is running the water pump is operating it sucks all that cold water from the radiator to the water pump and it pumps it out towards in this direction and also it pumps water out this way which is this line is connected to my IACV from here to IACV and it returns to the thermostat housing which is the cold side since there's water flow in here a steady flow going back to the radiator I said, why don't I weld a fitting and connect a water line here, which is, that's exactly what you see right there. So from here, it travels and it connects right here to the center of the CHRA. And it goes out on the other side, which I have a, another line, and it leads down back to the radiator the fitting swivel I just want it to move you don't have to have one of these the swiveling effect but I want it that way just in case the motor is flexing so it has ways to move you probably noticed that the uh, turbocharger is kinda in an angle which is I did it that way I did a lot of research about uh, installing uh, water coolant lines a well-known brand manufacturer of the turbocharger they said that in order to get the water flowing in there when the motor is shut down it's more like that's pretty much like the purpose of it is when the motor is shut down you want that water to have that siphoning effect in the system that it carries out all that heat from the turbocharger and it has to be within 20 degrees angled and I think mine is like 12 or 13 degrees why I didn't do it exactly 20 degrees it's because of I figured since I have my fitting pointing up and this is installed in the highest point of the motor higher than this one almost the same as this one right here yeah just about so I figured it will have the same effect so when the motor is shut down I think it will do its siphoning effect now you don't have to do exactly how I did it uh, now I'm gonna show you two ways of where you could tap in a water coolant if you don't own uh, welding equipment, then you could use the uh, a conventional method, I guess. Only do this if you want to run a water coolant. If you don't care much about 
the turbocharger, then you don't have to, to do this. Uh, every person are different, so this is just to give you an idea. I'm not forcing you to do it this way. This is my second option. Okay, I went and got this fitting. You know the water hose that connected to the water heater? That's where I thought about tapping this in. And then the small one is run another hose that goes out this way and it connects onto this, the out port. I will explain it later. Now the water for the inlet side of the turbocharger, you could do the same setup like mine if you like AN fitting. I have a DAS 6 fitting on there. I did have a episode about doing this by the way. You could uh, browse around on my channel and you can see it. If I would run it just like that one, I would get a tip fitting. I'm gonna connect it here. This outlet will be shared by IACV and also the one that's going into the inlet side. So now the system is complete. From here, it goes out that way and it connects here on the outlet. A T fitting here, run a water hose, and it connects to the inlet side. You're probably saying, why don't I run a cold water to the turbocharger, right? And then back the other way around, just put it on reverse. Remember now that when the engine is running, it, it pumps water going out here. It goes to the IACV and then it flows back into the cold side. That's how the water flows. If the uh, pressure is coming off from here, since it shares that port, then it goes out, pump through here, and it goes out back to the cold side. That's how the system will work. So when the engine is shut down, it does the same thing. It has that siphoning effect. If your radiator has a provision for a fitting, just like this one, or if you happen to have exactly the same thing like this, a tuck-in radiator, now it will be different this time. So from here, connect it to the inlet side, and go out back to the radiator. You don't have to use that one. That's your second option. The third option will be, this is the outlet for the IACV. The engine is running, it's pumping all that water, pressure out this way to the IACV. From the IACV, it goes out this way, connect here, goes out, then it comes back and it's connected back to the cold side inside this thermostat housing right here. And you would have the same effect when you shut the motor down. I don't want to do it that way, so <laughs> plus I already have this. I will come up with a drawing and I will add it on. That way you could see. So you have three options. This is on H22 or G23. On B series, you could apply the same thing, but B series have a, uh, uh, I think you could tap in on your block, I think. You could check your uh, engine block if it has one. But mainly, if you have an F series, H22, F20B, G23, that's how you could run a water coolant on your turbocharger. If you like this episode, make sure to drop a like and uh, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys on the next. Bye, everyone. I just want to remind everyone, this is just an idea of mine that I could uh, use to run a water coolant to cool the turbo, to reduce the temperature of the turbo. But always do your research. Let's assume that the motor is running, so it's pumping all that water. It goes out this way, back to the radiator. Now, H22 have a thermostat 
and there's a fitting for IACV. Let me talk about IACV first. The water pump is pumping that water, it goes out, then it goes to the IACV. From IACV, then it goes back to the cold side of the thermostat housing. And then it repeats all that cycle. So when the motor shuts down, it's doing that siphoning effect, the heat, it's doing that. So they say, in order to make this thing work, we need to tap in by installing a T-fitting. If your thermostat housing is equipped with an AN fitting like mine, all I need to do is put a T-fitting and connect a hose from here now, the water source is being shared by two, the IACV and the turbo. Then it goes out on the inlet side of the turbo. Then it goes out back to the tip fitting, which is this one right here. This is more like uh, the easiest, I would say. It's because of all we need to do is just run a long hose, that's all. All right, the engine is running. Now it's forcing all that water going out to the thermostat housing. Again, this is for H, F, and G. It goes out to the radiator and it goes out to the thermostat housing, which is the outlet for the IACV, right there, right? IACV, now the return line, instead of uh, connecting this back to the cold side, which is like this one here. It goes out. We are going to use a long hose now. Goes out. Now it goes in to the turbo. It goes out and then back to the cold side of the thermostat housing. Just like this one here. There and there. No welding required here, no AN fitting is required, no T fitting is required. All you need to do is to run a long hose from the IACV through here to the turbo out and then back to the thermostat housing. Hopefully this will help you guys out.